I'm going to tell you some stories. Uh, I might tell you how the Appalachian Hippie Poet was born. I was performing at Bristol Rhythm and Roots as part of Tennessee Shine's radio show on WDBX uh, at the Paramount Theater. And after my performance, I was kind of dressed like this, and peace symbol and earring, and my overalls. And I was standing and straddled the center line of State Street with one foot in Tennessee and one foot in Virginia. And some dude came by and said, you're the Appalachian Hippie Poet. I says, that gum, I like that. So let's, let's, let's use that as a name. So that's kind of how we got to the Appalachian Hippie Poet. And uh, tonight we've got Cornelia Overton on the fiddle. And there was an old fiddler uh, passed away three years ago, February, down in Knoxville. And, and I got to thinking about him and but his life. And I wrote this, and it's called Fiddling Joe. When the row was called up yonder, Joe Bell answered with a tune. He said, let me just fiddle one more time and I'll be there by noon. I'll take the 10.05 out of Knoxville town. I'll be there by dinner. Blessing said, all around. Yeah, fiddling Joe could fiddle. He could fiddle well. He could tell the Bible and maybe keep you out of hell. He could talk chapter and verse and tell of trains and trolleys. He could play that old time music and speak of the midday follies. Yeah, fiddling Joe had to go. A fiddling he was bound. With a diet, Dr. Pepper, and no ice, he was heaven bound on a greyhound. Thank y'all. Uh, how many of you know the music of the Black Lilies? Yay! Well, I caught up with the Black Lilies in Thomas, West Virginia last summer. Uh, and we played a place called the Purple Fiddle. And uh, they have a, a song called Goodbye Charlie that's a Vietnam era song. And uh, <clears throat> I, get, I guess, you know, I got to thinking about my own experience. Uh, I was in graduate school in 68 and the local draft board wanted me to stay in school and the state draft board wanted to draft me so I quit school and thought they was gonna draft me in September and they didn't. So I volunteered for the October draft call and then they wouldn't let me in. So this is a Vietnam era piece. Started in Thomas, West Virginia. Finished on July the 4th, hanging out with a bus driver tour in Pole Bridge, Montana. This is called the Purple Fiddle. She played the Purple Fiddle. Uncle Sam, red, white, and blue, said, sign up, boy, or we're coming after you. She played the purple fiddle, played it all night long. They held each other tight and made love in the dawn. She played the purple fiddle, suitcase in his hand, waving out the window, bound for a foreign land. She played the purple fiddle, hung yellow ribbons about the town. She played the purple fiddle, oh, it was a lonesome sound. She played the purple fiddle, we regret to inform she played the purple fiddle, and for him, she did more. She played the purple fiddle, casket red, white, and blue. She played the purple fiddle and cried for love so true. She played the purple fiddle never again. She never played that purple fiddle. She just cried for him. She played the purple fiddle, her mother in the ground. She played the purple fiddle. Oh, it was a lonesome sound. She played the purple fiddle for her father, too. She played the purple fiddle for the father she never knew. She played the purple fiddle for the father she never knew. And now I'm going to pick the pace up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna do a couple more. Uh, one of them's about drink and one of them's about food. Uh, I'm gonna do Mama's Hand. Knoxville will be hosting coming up mid-May the fourth or fifth annual International Biscuit Festival. And uh, they had a poetry contest and I wrote this to enter in a contest and it's become one of my, one of my favorite poems I like to do it. It's about my mama's biscuits. And mama made real thin biscuits. I really don't like all these high top biscuits I stand at Hardy's and McDonald's and dick the dough out of the center and throw it in the garbage. 
and then I eat a piece of sausage on one half and they give me free jelly to eat on the other half and I can taste the sausage and I can taste the jelly because I'm not chomping out all that dough. And this is called Mama's Hand. Mama made the biscuits, Mama boiled the jam. My daddy killed the hogs and Mama fried the ham. I see her in the kitchen, flour on her hand, cutting out them biscuits with an old tin can. She's making iced tea in a big old gallon jug, carrying it to the field full of tea that Mama's love. Country ham and biscuits, biscuits and jam, all made with love by Mama's floured ham. Thank, thank y'all. Uh, one of my school teachers was kin to me. In fact, several school teachers was kin to me. This one happened to be a double second cousin twice removed. <laughs> and, and when I got to study in family genealogy, after I got grown, I stopped by her house and, and she started digging out the family papers and, and I found a verse that my fourth great-grandfather had written. And I thought, I'll just see if I can write some verses before that verse and verses after that verse. And this is called Still on a Hill. Willis Crutcher on the hill had a great big old whiskey still. He still let whiskey down and filled up jugs for miles around. Now Andrew Sprite was a Tennessee man, my fourth grade, don't you understand? The words he wrote passed down in some papers that I found. He said, Willis Crutcher on the hill, I send to you my jug to fill. Fill it full, deny me not, and charge the same to Andrew Sprite. Willis Crutcher on the hill, he had a great big old whiskey still. He cut his wood with a chopping axe and he didn't pay no government tax. Whiskey made in Tennessee, whiskey made for you and me. Limestone water pure and clean, made the best damn whiskey you've ever seen. Willis Crutcher on the hill, I send to you my jug to fill. I got a hot fire to cook a pig and I got a hot fiddle to dance a jig. Swing your gal to the tune, cause morning's coming so very soon. Last dance and take a drink and pay your bill with the hide of a mink. Now Andrew died in 1839, he lived a good life and time. His blood is still in Tennessee, and his taste for whiskey passed on to me. His blood is still in Tennessee. And his taste for whiskey passed on to me.